Hi, this is Dr. Ariel Weitzman from Dearborn Ear, Nose and Throat. Today we're going to talk about the treatment of nosebleeds, also called epistaxis. So obviously at home people can start treatment. If someone gets a nosebleed, often just applying pressure for the appropriate length of time will stop a nosebleed. Certainly long enough that you could get in for a routine medical exam and it's no longer an emergency. So there are misconceptions. When someone has a nosebleed, there's no reason for the head to go back. That doesn't help, it just makes people choke on the blood. The head should be forward, the person should be sitting up, and you can always put a bowl or a towel under them to catch the blood. Pressure is applied to the nose by pinching the nose. The appropriate place to pinch is here. It's not up here where the bones are because you can't compress the bones. It's not down at the bottom of the nostrils because that's not where the blood vessels are. It's just above the bottom of the nostrils where it's still soft. The key thing is that pressure needs to be held firm and that pressure needs to be held for a bare minimum of five minutes, often 10 minutes, continually. If somebody pinches, for 30 seconds and let's go, that's not enough time for the blood to form a stable clot inside the blood vessel and it'll generally continue to bleed. So for people on any sort of blood thinner such as aspirin, they need 10 minutes of pressure. A person that doesn't take any of these medicines may get away with five, but it's still, by someone's watch or a clock, five minutes of steady pressure. If five minutes to 10 minutes of pressure is not effective, or the bleeding's very heavy, then you need to seek medical attention. The first key thing of dealing with a nosebleed is visualizing where the bleeding is coming from. 90% of these bleeds come from the front of the nose, and if we can directly see with our eyes where that blood vessel is, we can deal with it usually pretty easily. The 10% of bleeds that tend to give us trouble are further back in the nose where it's very difficult to see a specific spot. Once we can visualize it, then usually a specialist will apply an anesthetic agent to the nose. This can be done as a spray through the nose, or we will sometimes soak a cotton ball or pledge it in medication and apply it to that area to try to give some relief. Once the anesthetic is applied, then the most common way of treating a nosebleed that we can visually see is to cauterize it. Most of the time, cautery in an office is done chemically. This looks like a matchstick, but it's not. It's got a chemical at the tip called silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is a chemical that when you put it on a moist surface, not your skin, it doesn't do anything to skin, but a mucous membrane that's moist, the chemical itself coagulates the proteins and this will block the blood flow in a blood vessel, cauterizing it. If someone goes to an emergency room, usually if this fails, they'll go on to what's called nasal packing. Now nasal packing is something we try to avoid here as ear, nose and throat doctors because it's painful and it's somewhat traumatic to the nose. But usually in other circumstances such as an emergency room doctor, that's gonna be their next step because they don't have the specialized equipment that we have. Packing can take different forms. This is one form of a pack. And this is a nasal sponge. It has a string that we will tape onto the cheek just so it doesn't get dislodged. But when this is put in the nose, it expands. And it'll put pressure through the parts of the nose and compress the blood vessel, stopping blood flow. And if you can get this far enough in the nose, again, it's going to be probably 90% effective. But it hurts because it's rigid and it's very sore to put this in the nose. As ear, nose, and throat doctors, most of the time, because we have equipment here, we can visualize the bleeding and we don't need to use packing. One of the things we use to visualize, if it's difficult, is a telescope. So we have nasal telescopes that we can look into the nose and get to the back of the nose and we can try to find the exact spot. And this helps us because then we can try to cauterize that spot or do some other type of treatment and avoid the packing. Again, this was just a brief summary of how we treat nosebleeds. Obviously, there's aftercare, and if someone has a significant nosebleed, whether it's treated by ear, nose, and throat, or in an emergency room setting, they need to follow up with an ear, nose, and throat doctor. One treatment does not guarantee by any means that the bleeding won't happen again. We follow our patients. Some patients will need repeat treatments. Some patients will need something else done medically, whether it's a check of their blood levels to make sure they didn't lose too much blood, whether it's a check of their clotting system to make sure either a medication or a medical clotting problem 
is in existence because those people will just keep bleeding if something's out of whack. Again, if there's persistent bleeding or heavy bleeding, you should either go to the emergency room or if you can get into an ear, nose and throat uh, urgently, we, we would always recommend that. Um, we try to sneak in people into our office who have a nosebleed. We'll make time for them because we know that it's a difficult process going to the emergency room. Often there's a long wait and often they're using some methods that can be effective but can be more uncomfortable. Again, this is Ariel Waitsman from Dearborn Ear, Nose and Throat. I hope this was helpful for you. Mm -hmm.